Welcome to the Run for God Run Club, where you will find God in a runner's space. Welcome to the Run for God Run Club. This is your one stop each week to be motivated and inspired to get off the couch and onto the running trail where you can, in turn, inspire others to do the same. Let's learn, laugh, and leap into running together, giving God the glory for what we are able to do in His name. Amen. I am your running host, Dean Thompson, and we have another special treat for you today today. And last week, we had Elizabeth here. This week, we have somebody traveling even further away to come to, to come talk to us. And I love having this opportunity to talk to our Run Club members. Val Bleakley has come all the way from Northern Ireland to be part of the Run for God podcast. Well, she might have come for a little bit more than that. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Uh, but Welcome, Val. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Dean. Good, yes. good, good. Well, now, if you if you heard that, you can tell you can tell she ain't from around here. Well, that's the way we say it. You ain't from around here, are you? No, no, I, I ain't. <laughs> uh, so, how how is life in Northern Ireland? Life is very good in Northern Ireland. Um, weather wouldn't be as good as it is here, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we we it's a lovely country. When you say the weather's not as good, is it rainy? Is it cold? It is, is it colder. Colder. Yeah. 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 You guys are a little further north. We are, right. Yeah. Almost on the very north. Yeah. Um, and fairly close to the coast. Yeah. So about five, 10 minutes would take us to the nearest beach. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. That's yeah. pretty neat. Do you like living near the ocean? We do. Yeah. We do. Though it's usually quite windy and the sea is cold. Yeah. So it takes a very warm day for for the sea to be a, that little bit warmer. Yeah, in order to, to get in it. In order to get in, yeah. but you go in anyway. Yeah. Because <laughs> because, because it's the beach. <laughs> well, I had uh there were we have a couple of athletes that I have coached over the years and their sisters and they just love the beach. They and they they love to be in the water at mm. the beach. And I remember we went to we were in Oregon. And um, Oregon is a very it's it's a much further north than here. It's very cold. It's on the Pacific Ocean where it's really cold. And um, I couldn't stand in the water like my feet would hurt just standing, you know, ankle deep water. And they're out there playing in it up to their heads. And it's, it's I guess once you get used to it yep. and if you like it enough, yep. it's all good. It's often a matter of going in and coming out and go back in again until you get climatized <laughs> and then straight in. But I, I don't swim, so it doesn't bother me. Do you not? No, Do I not? don't. Do you like no. walking around through the water? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. No, I just have a fear of water yeah. you know, from my childhood. So. I get a little freaked out at the stuff. You know there's living things in that water. That's what freaks yep. me out a little bit about you know, swimming in a pool doesn't bother me, but swimming in the ocean's a little bit different. Yeah, for me, it's going under. It's got my it? nose under. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so tell us about your family. Well, uh, for my own family that I grew up in, um, two brothers and one sister all older than myself, I grew up in a Christian family, um, and um, yeah, sort of committed my life to the Lord quite early on, but I'm not sure just how much that commitment was. You know, right. um, some, I think sometimes you're, well, for me, my life is, I see it as like a river starting off like a stream and, and growing. Um, so, um, sometimes I was on the straight and narrow, sometimes I wasn't, but, um, then I met my lovely husband, Tom, yeah. and, uh, we got married and we have three girls. And three great son-in-laws and seven lovely grandchildren. So uh, the Lord has blessed us. Uh, I got goosebumps just hearing you say it. Just yeah. the, the, the joy in your heart yeah. when you talk about it yeah. is awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's great. So, and they all live in Northern Ireland? They do. Okay. They do. do. Um, they all went to university okay. uh, over in England. And, uh, but thank lovely. They all came back again. Oh. Youngest daughter, just a few years ago, she uh, was in Southampton and then decided that they would come home again. So uh-huh. that's lovely. All within 
um, 60 minute drive oh, from us and so more than just five minutes, minutes away from us. That's awesome. So do you get to see them frequently? Oh, we do. Oh, we do, that's yes. Great. That's and great. Uh, every opportunity we meet as a whole family. Yeah, that's fantastic. Hours, yes. I'm so jealous because my family is scattered all over the United States. Oh, like I literally have family members who are over 3,000 miles away from me. Oh, so, gosh. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And it's, it's hard. We can't really do our, our family reunions are called funerals. Oh, you know, God, that's, yes. That's, that's about the only time we get case, to. Which is, yeah. uh, no, yeah. we can, uh, and, and Tom's family, they're just about an hour and a half away, less than yeah. that. So that's they're all there, and apart from one sister who's in Tenerife, um, they're all close, and my brothers are just about 15 minutes away from us and their right. family, so. That's great. Yeah, we're blessed. That's great. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, there's a lot of people listening to this. They're not seeing it. And so um, they can't see the gray hair. Do, do you want to share with us how what your age is? I can. Yes, okay. I, I'm seventy seven. All right. Um, yeah. So you you are one spry lady for seventy seven. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Thank That's, you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and it's funny because in our country, we don't ask ladies their age. Ladies tend not to say their age. Is that I right? Don't, yeah, I don't know why. But you yeah. don't mind. No, no, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes you get to a certain point and you say, no, I'm not saying my age or whatever the reason. And then you get to that point, 80s, whatever, more. And then oh, I'm happy to say I'm 80. You know? Yes, absolutely. Or whatever, you know. That's a celebration, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. As a, as a friend said, you know, when she had her birthday, she said, well, I'm just a day older than I was yesterday. That's right. That's yeah, exactly well, right. Age is your... just a number, they, yeah. as they say, right? Yep. All right. So, um, so what, you know, you've been here and hanging out in the United States here for a few days and we had a great weekend, didn't we? Yes. yes. <laughs> so what do you pick up on being, what do you think are the biggest differences between Northern Ireland and the United States? Oh gosh. When you say biggest, that is actually the word big. <laughs> Everything seems to be bigger. Yeah. The cars are bigger, um, and they're higher, which is <laughs> difficult for me being, being of a small stature. <laughs> right, right. Um, and um, on the whole, probably your houses are bigger, though we do have big houses, but probably not as big as your biggest houses. Yeah. Your roads are wider. Yeah. And, and I know you do sometimes have just two lanes, but mostly it seems to be your lanes are four or whatever. Yeah. Um, so. So bigger. 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 Yeah. Bigger, we, you yes. know, in the United States, we talk about how everything's big in Texas. Yes. Which, you know, as a state. And um, we... <laughs> So it's actually the whole United States that's everything's big. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I, I say I think I've probably have grown about two inches by the time I get home getting in and out of cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. All right. Well, we're, we are not going to share a run club, social, or Facebook post this week simply because we're recording way well, well ahead of time. And so uh, it would be old news by the time we shared it. But we will answer the trivia question that we had from our last podcast with Elizabeth. And the question was, what is VO2 max? It's a term that we use in running a lot. And it's a very important term uh, for for the reasons I'll, I'll outline here. So what is VO2? VO2 max is the maximum rate of oxygen your body um, is able to use during exercise. So what is the m- most oxygen that your body can take in and use while you're while you're exercising? Obviously, that's running, that's walking, that's cycling, it's swimming, whatever it takes a breath to do. Um, your VO2 max has, has a difference. Now, that that um, reason why that's critical is because as you bring that oxygen into your body, that oxygen is absorbed into your lungs, and then it turns into something called ATP, which is basically energy. It's what gives your muscles energy to work. And so it's, it's really, really important. The higher the VO2 max, the more work your muscles can do. And so um, a high VO2 max can be a really good predictor of athletic performance. Obviously, for a runner, it's almost everything. Um, It's rare that a runner with a lower VO2 max can beat somebody with a higher VO2 max. Um, So it's it's very important, runners, swimmers, cyclists in particular. Um, But not just for athletes. It's also a way that they they measure cardiorespiratory fitness in people in general. So if you go to the doctor, if you've ever had a stress test where you get on the treadmill and you walk until you you, you get exhausted, um, that's a VO2 max test. Mm. And so uh, it's something that 
uh, is a really good measure. So no matter what anybody's athletic ability, everybody should work on trying to increase their cardiorespiratory endurance because, according to research, a higher VO2 um, is associated with lower risk of death. And I think that death thing is something we all want to avoid. Yeah, So absolutely. <laughs> for as long as we can, anyway. Yeah. Um, so what's considered a good VO2 max? That's a really tough question because it depends on several factors. It depends on age, gender, your fitness level. It depends on even your elevation and where you are. You know, if you're in in Denver, in the Mile High City, well, it's different than it is here. And so... Um, and and all of those factors, some of those factors, you know, the age, sex, obviously that's uncontrollable. But the majority of your VO2 max measurement comes from your athletic ability and how you exercise. You can build that up. And so um, that's that's a that's good news because everybody can have a higher VO2 max if they want to, if they want to work hard enough to do that. So um, I've got a chart here that just has uh, just some some. Averages based on on sex and age. So let's just take the 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 age group fifty to fifty nine. A superior um, VO two max would be forty eight point nine. An excellent would be forty three point four. A good would be thirty nine point two. Fair would be thirty five point six. So you see that there there's not a, it's not a huge range, um, and that number is is. We won't go into how that's measured. It's just that's just too much. But the idea is that as you get more fit, that VO2 number goes up. Now, it says the superior VO2 max is 48.9 for a typical male, 50 to 59. I'm 57. My VO2 max is about 62. So mine is not not only is it not not it's well past superior, but that means that I should live longer. Now, if you're female in that same age group, remember the the superior was 48.9 for men. For women, it's 41.1. So women have smaller lungs. They're smaller in stature. And so that's why women's VO2 max tends to be smaller or less than, than men's. Um, but by the same token, women don't typically have as much mass because they're usually, like in your yeah, case, yes. much, much shorter. right? Yes. And so you have less weight. That your muscles have to push around, okay. yeah. and so it uh, it it it's kind of equal when you look at it from that standpoint. So, how can you increase your VO two max? Well, obviously, what we do is run for God. Um, if you're following any kind of a training program, if you're getting out there two, three, four, five times a week to run or to walk or to to do whatever to move around, then you're increasing your VO two max. Um, the best way to increase it is to do varied exercises. Um, it's great to run. It's great to walk. But it's also good to do other things. It's good to do like weightlifting or it's good to do, um, you know, uh, like push-ups and sit-ups. And, you know, those, those kind of body weight exercises are also really good at pushing your VO2 max up. And, of course, you want to vary the duration and the intensity of those things as well to help with that. So, um, again, why would you want to increase your VO2 max? Well, the bottom line is because it will help you live longer. Um, And not only will it help you live longer, but it will help you have a better quality of life. life. Yes, Uh, because... Uh, you can do more. You don't get ex- you know you don't get exhausted walking up and down stairs. You um, you're able to at 77 get in and out of these big high vehicles, right? <laughs> Just about <laughs> right, yes. right. But you know yeah. there there are a lot of folks out yeah. there who can't do that, mm. and yeah. you can, and that's mm. partly because you've been active, and I'm mm. sure that you've stayed active your whole life. Yeah, that's why you're here with Run for God to start with, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, so living longer that's a pretty good reason. Yeah. So, Definitely. Yeah. Um, And if you ever want to get your VO2 max measured, it's not an easy thing. There are some tests you can do. There's one in the lab you can do. But in order for them to measure your VO2 max, you pretty much have to go to exhaustion. So it's a hard. Oh, yes, because I was wondering about that. Yes. Yes, it's a hard measurement. Now, if you've got a G, one of these GPS fancy yes. Garmin watches, yes. it gives you a pretty good estimate of what your VO2 max is. Oh, right. Yes. And so yeah. you can you can kind of look it up on your watch. Mm-hmm. It's yep. not completely accurate, mm-hmm. but it's it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Yeah. It's in the ballpark, at least. Oh, yeah. I must check that out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Check it out mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. 
All right. As usual, we're sponsored by J Radio. Go check them out. While you are working hard to keep your body in shape physically, the music you listen to while you run can help keep you in shape spiritually. We have partnered with J Radio to put together a group of running playlists by Mitchell, Lane, Holly, me, and others that you hear on the Run Club podcast. Plus, you can listen to a playlist put together by members of Run Club just like you. Check out the whole station of Run For God playlist now at jradio.com and in the J Radio app. All right, we're back. And uh, listen, if you're not tuning in on Thursday night, you're missing out on something. Every Thursday night, we at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we get together as a group and we tackle some kind of a topic and it could be anything here recently we talked about the run for god 5k we kind of did a recap on on that Um, we've talked about how your muscles work we've had bible studies where we talk more about you know god and and how what we do as runners and walkers um um is very much like the kingdom of god right so um T- tune in on Thursday nights. And then the other thing I want to say is Val is here to share her story. And it's a wonderful story. And you're going to hear it here in just a minute. But we need more stories. And so if you're out there and you're listening and you haven't shared your story, you do have a story. And we want to hear it. So go to runforgod.com and click on share your story. It's pretty simple. And then it just walks you through. You write out your story. You there. It, it asks you to give three scripture references and three questions. Um, do that, and um, you'll be on the podcast. And uh, that's pretty awesome. Run Club members go straight to the front of the line too when they when they turn theirs in. All right. So um, you and Tom have really blessed us with your presence over the last couple of years. Um, it's just been a joy to have you here, and I know uh, I know everybody keeps saying we'll see you next year, and I see the look in your eye of <laughs> we're not sure if we're going to be well, able to be yeah. here next year. Be a year older, <laughs> yeah, so. and 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 everything that goes with that. You know, yeah. it's it obviously is a financial issue to get yeah. here, and there's a lot of reasons why it's 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 hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Um, but man, we so appreciate you being here oh, these last. We years. appreciate being here. Yeah, we've really enjoyed it. Well, yeah. good. Well, good. Um, but you have a story, and you're going to talk about kind of how you got here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I love this story, and I think you may, you think you shared a little bit of this last year with the group, yes, in, in, in uh, on our Saturday night dinner, yes, um, yes, we did just a little, yeah. yeah. But everybody needs to hear this story, so I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, my, as I would call it, my Dalton chapter of my story, um, I suppose began about 2019, um, after a hip operation, um, you get instructions that you should be walking. Mm-hmm. And, um, so at that point I wasn't confident about walking outside. Um, so I started to walk inside and I would do circuits of the house. Um, now the house, w- <coughs> Sorry, house isn't really overly big, but so I would go round the kitchen, up the hall, round the bedroom, back down the hall, round the kitchen again. And I, I would keep that going for quite a while. And then one time I was going up the hall, <coughs> sorry, and um, God clearly said, run. And I said, <laughs> well, I can't run again, run. I thought, okay, well, you said run, I'd run. So I picked up the feet up the hall, I got to the kitchen, and I thought, no, that's maybe enough. So I stopped and walked around the kitchen, got to the hall again, I thought, okay, run. So I ran up the hall, got to the bed, walked there. So I ended up the circuits, walk and run. And um, as I was doing that, God reminded me about a program that my daughter had actually told my youngest daughter, um, Couch to Mirth, sorry, Couch to 5K, that our national health had started. So mm-hmm. I thought, okay. Uh, so I had a look to see what it was and um, found that it had this plan. And uh, when I looked, it was exactly the same as what I'd been doing. Yeah. So I thought, great. So I checked it out and, and I started and... Um, did it inside for about four weeks and I thought right 
maybe I'm confident enough now to try outside. Right. So I tried outside and I managed. Um, yes, in one way I did, but unfortunately my knees didn't like it. Mm. Um, I hit what I call it was a, an old injury. Um, quite a few years before that, I'd been long jumping on hard packed sand, mm. uh, which I hadn't realised is a no-no. Mm. And so I did an awful lot of damage to my legs, yeah. um, ligaments, and I don't know what I didn't do. So I couldn't get down on, on my knees for about a year afterwards. Mm. And this was the same thing. Um, but um, thankfully, it was a shorter um, recovery time. So I think maybe in about three weeks or whatever. So I decided I would start the plan again. So I did. And there were two to three weeks, I think it was. And went out again. Same thing. Knees mm-hmm. went again. And I thought, no, well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. But sometime, I think, within that, I was praying. I can't remember what week then, but a back recovery week. And I was praying. And God clearly spoke three words into my thoughts. And they were, run for God. Mm. And I thought, I like the sound of that, but I don't know what that means. So I pondered it for a while. And then I thought, right, okay. What do you do now? And inspired by God, I went on to Google. I thought, I wonder if I put those three words in, what will come up? And up came Run For God Run Club. And I thought, that just felt right. So I looked at a bit more, uh, only to find out it was in America. (laughs) I thought, oh, well, no problem. I'm sure there must be something here that's affiliated with it. Um, So I tried. um, Anywhere, no. Northern Ireland, no. UK, no. And so I thought, well, well what do I do now? Um, so I thought, well, maybe I can join online. Um, so I looked and found out that I could. Um, so I ordered the T-shirt and the manual and I started and discovered for the third time that the program was exactly the same as what I'd been doing, yeah. um, these circuits. So I thought that was great. Um, about that time, um, God put the same verse into my head, I think about three times. And um, the verse was, as one you know, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Yeah. Uh, me there. For since, since we also are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin which so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Mm. At that time, about half eight every Sunday morning, I would listen to a great speaker and an author uh, called Reverend Malcolm Duncan. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's a pastor of a Neelam church in Belfast. And every morning at half eight, he would go through various books of the Bible, but very meticulously, Mm -hmm. uh, even take maybe a year or two to go through a book of the Bible, a great, great Bible scholar and teacher. And on the 2nd of May of 2021, um, he was going through the book of Hebrews and he gave an amazing picture of that verse that really impacted me. And actually, I ended up in tears just listening to it. Mm. And um, again, on the following Sunday, he mentioned it again and it had the same impact on me. Um, I'll explain that that picture uh, in a moment. Um in between those two Sundays, then um, I registered actually with Run for God Club to do the catch to, to the 5K. And at that point, my husband Tom said that he would come and do the walking bits with me. Uh-huh. Um, and then on the tenth, we headed out again. And week three, same thing again with the knees. And I thought, right, well, I'll still keep trying. Um, but some, a thought crept into my head that maybe with a hip replacement, which I, as I said, I had in mm-hmm. 2019, maybe I shouldn't be running. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, if that thought's there, maybe I should check it out. So I did. And practically all the sites that I looked at were all saying the same thing, that uh, really it's not recommended um, that you should be right. running with a hip replacement. So then came the questions did I hear God right? Did he say run? Did he say run for God? And if I can't run, what does all this mean? Um, so I puzzled that for a while. And then again, 
God's inspiration. I wondered, did Run for God Club have walkers? Could could you tag along as a walker? And I found yes. I emailed and delighted that you could. On one hand, delighted, but on the other hand, maybe slightly disappointed that I couldn't be a runner. And so those mixed emotions were there. But um, as I'd now be walking, then Tom decided that he would train with me as well, and we would both do it. And he joined the club. And in a way, that was God's answer for me, because I was wondering if, if I'm out there on my own, you know, I thought, yeah, um, this is this is the company that I need, uh, yeah. even as, as a walker. Yeah. Then, um, I think it was on about 17th of May or whatever, my parcel arrived from America. There was my T-shirt, mm-hmm. right on the train in my not uh, ready to go. Um, but they're staring at me for the third time was that verse. And I just thought, mm-hmm. that is some confirmation mm-hmm. from the Lord. Um, after that, a few health issues struck and I wasn't able to get out walking again. Uh, never mind the walking faster that you yeah. meant to do for the plan. And so... And I struggled with the whole idea as well of, of going out with a walker and wearing this T-shirt that said run on it, mm. um, you know, when I was actually walking. Um, but with God's encouragement and, and uh, Tom's enthusiasm, we set out anyway, and we began the 12 weeks after the 5K. And I remember on the first morning and saying to Tom that I just felt that I was starting something that could be very significant. Mm-hmm. I just had that thought, but I didn't know what. Um, and every week we went out three times a week, and God encouraged us to go out in whatever the weather was. And we worked up to 12 weeks, and we thought, right, what can we do? You know, where can we get a race? Um, only to find that Northern Ireland doesn't have very many races that are, are geared for walkers. They only do park runs. So... On the 17th, I think it was, at the end of our 12 weeks, we headed and we did a, a park run. And great, we are finished, that was it. But somehow it didn't seem like being finished. Yeah. And I, I, I struggled with that. And when we did finish, um, all the volunteers had virtually packed up and we were just coming in as, as, as two wee people. Yeah. And I just thought... God, this is definitely not the picture that I felt that you gave me. And I struggled with that but in prayer. And um, I said, Lord, why is this? And um, he just said, this is because you haven't finished. You've just really called in it the pit stop to refuel. <laughs> but at that time, to, I was talked about that picture that I, the Reverend Malcolm Duncan had given me. And the picture that he had painted was, he said, imagine that you're a runner and you're coming into the arena or the the um, um, stadium, wherever you're coming in, and you're just coming in through the archway and you're about to do your last lap. And there as you come in, you can hear the roar of the crowd. All the watching witnesses are cheering you on. Mm. And suddenly you see Jesus and there's nothing there in your head but getting to him at the finishing line. Mm. I just thought, what a picture that is, mm. you know, uh, just to be there and, and going that and seeing that. And I thought, but where are the cheering witnesses, Lord? They weren't there, that park run. And um, so that morning anyway, the next morning, we went out again. And uh, we thought, well, what do we do now? Um do we, do we carry on? We're finished. And then with God's thought of saying, you're just refueling. You, you want to call in at the pit stop, like the cars. Um, mm. Thought, right, okay, maybe we'll just carry on doing the odd park run or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did. Actually, I think it would be three, two, three weeks later, we did another one. And this time, there was one volunteer cheered us in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, a Maybe four or five weeks after that, my youngest daughter and her husband, they came down to the, spend the weekend with us and they had never done a run on the beach and we have a local one. And so she said, will you come along, Mum? 
And I said, well, I don't know. I'll maybe do half of it. But um, I went the, anyway, and I actually did the whole thing, wow. which surprised myself and mm-hmm. surprised Tom because he wasn't able to do that one. And uh, so with being a runner and her husband being a runner, they were in ahead of me. So this time I had three people cheering me up. <laughs> um, but um, we continued then to do the do the running and um, or the walking rather. And uh, then I think it was probably about, I would say maybe December. Or so Mitchell started and yourself started to talk um, about fully incorporating walkers. Yeah. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And Mitchell talked about how difficult a decision it had been for him mm-hmm. to welcome walkers in fully. And then he mentioned me and he started to say about the email that I'd sent <laughs> and about how God's guidance on my story as a walker was tying in a bit with what God was placing in his mind. Yeah. And that just blew me away because I thought, you know, there's someone on this side of the world that God can touch would reach someone on the other side. Mm. And But God is not He's not limited by any boundaries. Um, but hearing then for the first time, you know, that God was, was um, incorporated, that Mitchell was incorporating walkers, that God had inspired him to do that, um, and that there was going to be this new program, Couch to Marathon. And I thought, right, okay, you know, I have to be joining that. And um, so I did, uh, with the idea, of course, of just going to 5K. Um, and so we did. And we started that. Hmm. And then I think sometimes later then Mitchell started to talk about the 5K in Dalton and encourage people, of course, to sign up for a race somewhere. Um, I thought, that's a lovely idea. Mum, Dalton, that would be nice. But no, that's okay if you're near there. So I thought, right, okay, so I'm encouraged to do get a race. So I looked and looked. And everywhere I searched, there was nothing. Hmm. And I tried to search a bit further, still nothing. Um, I thought maybe a charity race, no. And uh, I kept drawing blanks, but in between the blanks up came this idea. It's amazing how God will plant an idea and then he'll water it yeah. gently by gently. Um, and that idea kept rising and you kept talking about this three day event and that was great. Um, but I thought no. No, there's no way that we can go. It's true this, it's true that. And I thought, right, in order to put this idea out of my head, I wrote down all the reasons I couldn't go. And I put it in the drawer, out of sight, out of mind. But as I say, it was out of sight, but it wasn't out of mind. Mm. And um, then a podcast mentioned this singer, this who was coming, this gentleman, Earl Bracken, and his band... And I wonder what he sounds like. And you Google everything nowadays. I Googled and, and I found him. And as I listened, I just thought, wow, I want to go and hear that man, you know. Um, I just love Southern gospel music. Yeah. Uh, I think there must be something American away in me way back somewhere. <laughs> 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 but um, anyway, I, I thought if I mentioned this idea to Tom, he's going to think this is crazy. Um, and I did mention to him, and I think he did think it was crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm coming up with all those ideas like myself. But um, so we thought about it. Um, and after uh, pondering for quite a while, um, God gave us a nudge and I think it was not knowing how many people would be coming um, and the possibility of maybe not getting a hotel I think that's what sparked off um, moved us and so I think it was about end of January um, of last year that we booked mm. and on we carried on the training three times a week go out to our coast road and um, on the all packed up, everything done, apart from from one thing that we had to do um, 12 hours before before we left. Packed up and went to Belfast Airport because that was where the test had to be done. We were going from Dublin um, and we had to wait for, for the results. The only thing that could stop us from going happened that day, a positive test of covid Mm. Now, I had checked before we went, and, mm. and I, it was negative. Um, 
I could only say that I was devastated at that point because it was just me. It wasn't Tom. He was fine. Yeah. Um, and I just felt that a battle raged between Satan and God on that day for us for about mm. eight hours. Mm. And, um, but with God moving barriers, we actually got a new test in Dublin because it'd been a different, same country, but different country. Yeah. And it produced a negative result, <laughs> which I knew was 100% certain. Right. I was correct. Yeah. But so it was a false positive. It was a false positive. Yeah. But it really shook me. Um, and I just said to Tom the next day as we were, the plane was lifting off, that God had something big planned for this, this mm-hmm. trip. And I didn't know what it was. But... It was it was devastating, but God was in there, and I knew, and I kept saying to Tom, "This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense." Mm-hmm. Because if I feel that God has brought us all this way for to stop us now, no, right. doesn't make sense. And mm-hmm. um, so we did. God had so much planned for us when we came last year. Um, amazing welcome for us mm-hmm. from the Run for God team, Zell so Mitchell and, and Holly and Gay and. Just everybody. Mm-hmm. And it was really lovely. Such warmth and, and friendship. And then to hear Earl Bracken yeah. on the Saturday night. That that was just just great. Um but one of the biggest things for me was the race. Not just doing the race, but the fact that Mitchell had said that you wait till the last person comes in before any medals are given out. Mm. So, of course, as I finished that time, there were all those cheering witnesses that God had promised me all those that while before. And I just felt that that was was totally awesome, that God would do that. But on the evening then of the barbecue, um, after a bit of hesitation on my part, um, I eventually got up to, to speak when Mitchell had, had given them the mic and then passed it back again. Um, but I just felt that God had nudged me then to give a word of encouragement to Mitchell and to the team and that before we were leaving Ireland, I had wondered why God would bring us so far. What was his purpose? And when I, <coughs> sorry, when I spoke that night, <coughs> I felt that, <coughs> sorry, that it was to bring his message of encouragement to Mitchell mm-hmm. and to the team. Because of what he said, um, I was still confused at that point too as well. Because God had said run, and I ended up walking. But when I after I'd finished speaking, I realised that um, God hadn't really wanted me to come as a runner. He wanted me to come as a walker. Mm-hmm. Um, because I found out actually that somebody was there running with a hip replacement. <laughs> I thought, well, if they could, why could I not? But as God said, I didn't want you to be there. I wanted you to be there as a walker yeah. to um, put my stamp of approval on on this whole of Mitchell welcoming the walkers in and just to uh, bless Mitchell for his faithfulness in obeying God's call. Amen. And um, I just think, what amazing God we serve. And and here we are again, and and I didn't think would would be missed to be here this year, yeah. but with a bit of encouragement, you know, from people and a nudge from God, yeah. we are here, yeah. you know. And again, you think, well, why, you know? But it's all about sharing God's story yep. and just seeing how God has directed, you know, over the years. Because yeah. for somebody like me, I'm very much an introvert, so I was never used to speaking. Yeah. Until God moved in my life and actually put a call in my life quite a few years ago and, and actually spoke two words into my thoughts audibly. And he said, the ministry. And I turned around. I knew it was in the room. I turned around to see who was there, who spoke. Yeah. That, um, Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. Which again, 
he brought about. <laughs> and then you got here this year. We had our our church service on Sunday morning, and Earl Bracken was Earl back Bracken again. Earl Bracken was there. And not, Did that surprise you? Oh, it, well, I heard he was coming, but then he came over. Um, and Mitchell's mum was there and entered justice again. And uh, I, I said about his photograph because he had come back from what you had said to him. He had come back and got a photograph of us the last time. Yeah. So it was just really that. That just made that was icing on the cake. Yeah. It's time for me just to hear him. It, it's it's so amazing to me to listen to your style. I say it's amazing. We see it all the time, and so it, it's not really, it's not surprising, but it is amazing. All of the doors, there were certain doors opened, yeah, and certain doors closed, yes, and all the right combination happening all along the way, yes, to confirm the, the what God put in your heart to start with um, all the way to the finish and then um, for you to get to that 5k in Dalton and have all those people cheering you know was was the picture that God gave you yes yes it was and uh, it's so um I don't know it's it's such a joyful thought to think that you got through with as 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 much of a downer as it was to think you got through with that first 5k and you're like this isn't it. Yes. You know? Yes. It's, it's like it's uh, you're disappointed, but at the same time, there's an even bigger thing yes. out in front of you somewhere. Yes. Yeah, uh, but you you don't, like if they ask, you don't see the big picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah but just how God works. Yeah. And like how he could work for somebody over in Ireland yeah. to influence somebody here or be a little in, influence. Well, and make no mistake, we, we talked about walk for God for years I mean, we have been talking about that we've mentioned it over and over and um, as you said Mitchell was a little reluctant mm-hmm. to to kind of give into that and um, you you were the one that pushed it over and and made that difference and now we have walking t-shirts yes and you got the first I one. I did indeed. Honored to do that. Honored to wear it as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Not sure how great a model I was, but. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So uh, what What a difference. And um, and I think that, you know, maybe Mitchell just needed somebody like you to soften his heart a little bit. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so, so interesting. Um, and then, you know, he came up with a pretty good. Um, he came up with a pretty good design where we kind of kept the run for God, but have walk in there. Yes. It's, it's pretty cool. Yes, I love that. Just yeah. that the walkers are still within the run for God. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, and he came up, uh, even even that part of the puzzle where God gave Mitchell this knee injury. <laughs> yes. To kind of encourage yes. him to walk. Yes. And so he started walking and he, he got this idea. Well, I wonder if I walked and did the same thing that the runners do, the same program, yes. all the way to the marathon. Would that work? Because we didn't have any idea. Yes. And uh, so we thought, well, well, he'll try it. So he did. And it worked. And I remember, <laughs> funny story, he got to the point where he was supposed to walk his half marathon. Yes. And so he called me up. He said, hey, you want to walk this half marathon with me? I'm like, yeah. I'll no walk. problem. No problem yeah. at all. So I figure I'll go out there and I'll, I'll walk the half marathon with him. And um, and we did it out there near my house, actually, out on those, those roads. And um, the next day, I was so sore. I mean, <laughs> here's, I'm running, you know, I'm running eight or ten miles a day, a day. every day. And I run, you know, walk 13 miles. You think that's no big deal, man? It almost destroyed me. I felt <laughs> it, it was tough. It was tough. So anybody out there who thinks that um, walkers are less than, um, it's just not true. It's a whole different. It's a whole different thing from running, and um, yeah, I think it's. I think it's an important thing to include. So how how do how do we get to the point? At this point, where we are now, where we welcome walkers even more than than they feel welcome now. Yeah, well, I I feel that a focus on the walkers um, is good, um, and I would I think probably encourage people who are walkers to share their when I say their stories, their their progress. Yeah, you know, on on the social page. Because 
you're looking and you see runners and you say, oh, great, yes. You know, but if, I think if walkers were encouraged to put their progress on, then I'll say, all right, right, well, I can put mine on. And you say, well, how are you doing in your walk? You know, so. Good point. I think that, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. yeah because I know with, with the, the, um, park runs, um, before we went to do one, I thought, right, okay, I'll, I'll look on their videos because they would put pictures and whatever on mm-hmm. and I would say, where are the walkers? And yeah. I, I couldn't really see, and they were all focused on the runners because yeah. even though they say park run, and now they're trying, they're actually trying to get walkers, yeah. fish walkers yeah. in as well. Um, but they weren't there. And I thought, right, if you had more fo- focus on those walkers and photographs of those walkers, yeah. then other people say, oh, well, there are walkers there. I can go. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's, a, that's a really good point. <laughs> good point. Well, I, I've been really convicted lately that, um, in our, I just saw something recently that showed the average number of steps per day that people take in different countries. And I, there was one, well, I can't remember which country it was now. Oh, my goodness. I want to say it was one of the Scandinavian countries that they average like like over 10,000 steps a day. This mm. just No, it was Australia. That's where it was. Gosh. It was Australia. Mm. In Australia, they average like 10,000 steps a day on average throughout the country. Yeah. And it, it listed some others. In America, we average 5,000 steps a day. Mm. What a difference. Yes. And we have a tendency to sit in front of screens. We have a tendency to, to, everything's done for us these days. Mm. You know, yes. I mean, we, I remember changing the oil in my car. We don't do that anymore. We take mm. it somewhere and we have somebody else do it. Um, I remember when I was a kid having to get up to change the channel on the television. Yes. <laughs> of course, we don't do that anymore. Yes. Um, and we've got all this stuff right in front of us. And so it makes life easier, but that's not good for us physically. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, we've been very convicted that we, we really need to get um, get people up and off the couch. I think couches are killing us. Yes. And um, we, we've got to get people off the couch. Um, and then, of course, I think also sharing Christ is more important than ever too you know it's something yes. that, of course and that's our that's our heart's desire at run for god is not only to get you stronger physically but most importantly do you have a relationship with christ that yes. means more to us than anything yeah, absolutely and um, we hope to reach them through the running and when you realize you can overcome big barriers running a lot of times that re- you get to realizing that um god is is amazing and uh you, you look at him in a whole different way so are you guys in Northern Ireland, are you guys, we have a decline in church attendance in the United States, for sure. Are you guys seeing that in Northern Ireland as we, well? Yes, yes, we would. Yeah. We would. Um, and COVID lockdown didn't help anything. Yeah. Um, and a lot of older people, of course, are maybe... A, a bit more anxious about being in crowds and they've got used to what things were, you know, when yeah. they were in lockdown. Yeah. Um, kids have found other things to do. Mm. So, um, That's sad. yeah, what we would call our Sunday school is just from um, age up to 11, 12. And then after that, then they would have, in our church, they would have a thing called Connect for the teens. Yeah. So we sort of separate that. But low numbers. No numbers. Yeah. My my oldest daughter, she um, leads the, the Sunday school, um, and and sometimes I would help her with that with maybe seven or eight of a team. But um, if maybe only six, eight, mm. eight kids, yeah. Um, and before you would have had more, but they just find other things to do. And as I say, with lockdown, they've found even more to do. Yeah, yeah, that's sad. Just, so, how long was Northern Ireland in your area, your church? How long were you guys out of the church? Oh, we were out quite a while, I would say, oh, I don't know, over a year. Wow. Every year. Now, we did do video recording. Right. Um, and we then, our rector then felt that people were maybe making just too much use of not coming out to church. So then he went to audio. Yeah. Um, and, but little by little, the people are coming. Oh, good. Um, good. So... Thankfully, that it's not a big congregation. We have quite a small church and an old church. Yeah, you know, it would be a lovely building, lovely yeah. old stone building. Oh, that's but, cool. Yeah, no, it is a lovely church. So, um, 150 whatever yeah. uh, on, on a Sunday morning. Okay. Um, okay. But uh, but it's coming, and uh, with communion, we were we would have the one cup. 
yeah. rather than the little cups. And so we're, we're working around that. Last Sunday was, was two weeks ago was our first one where we actually had the, the one cup. But yeah. because people were maybe a bit anxious then, we went to the, what, the small cups the small we had ones. with the bread on right. it as well. So some people took that. Yeah. Went yeah. up to, to the, the rail, the communion rail. Yeah, uh, I, I took the that. bread, whatever. Yeah. But the the wine people were just that wee bit more anxious because sure. you're passing on germs. And uh, we would do the non-alcoholic wine, mm-hmm. so then people think, well, it's not sanitising the the goblet enough. But oh um, my goodness, yeah. So about yeah, that. yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, yeah. I, I think it's hopefully we're coming back to where we were slowly, but we need a whole lot more. We need a we need a revival. Oh, all yes. over. Oh, we uh, do. We, yes, we're, no doubt. We're so far from, from God. Yeah, yes. Um, but God is working. And I know in some churches, um, that Reverend Malcolm Duncan that I listened to in, in, in Dundonald Edom, they would see people come to faith every Sunday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so God is working. He absolutely is. He's always working, and that's that's the... Yeah. That's the tough part for us yes. to handle sometimes, yes. isn't it? The yeah. fact that we see we see things around us kind of degrading yeah. and going downhill, and it's mm. so frustrating. Yeah, and the devil would would focus on that and yeah. say, "Oh no, it's on the decline." But no, it's not. In other countries, it's rising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and countries especially where persecution. Christianity is rising. I know we yeah. we should feel so guilty about that. Yep. That Christianity is rising yeah. where you can't have Christianity. Yes. <laughs> and when you're making it in secret and you can't pray out loud or sing out loud. Yes. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. But hopefully we hopefully we're headed for a reunion. I, I've seen some things over the past probably year or so yes. that encourage me. Yes. Um, I've seen a, a little bit of of pushback, and it, I think it's because what you just mentioned, the, the church is becoming more persecuted in places like the United yes. States. Yes, yes. And so I think, you know, it, it, it may, I think hard times make – make good men oh, you know yes. I, I think hard yes. times help us to mm-hmm. i think that's part of our, our problem is that things have been so good in our yeah, you know country for so long yes yes, yes. yeah and uh, we need some discomfort mm-hmm. you know one of the things that that i think i go back and think about is when i was in college i didn't have a whole lot my my parents didn't make a lot of money um i was fortunate to be able to go to a, a really good school um but i i ate very poorly because I ate what I ate the cheapest things I could find. I I scraped together pennies to make sure I wasn't gonna. I didn't get any school loans mm-hmm. because I didn't want to owe money after I got yeah. through. And so it was a tough time for me to get through college. Uh, but now I look back on it, and of course I'm thankful for what I have today. Yes. Yeah. But part of the reason why I have what I have today is because I went through what I went through then, yeah. yes. and I, I don't. You know, I don't training. Yes. I don't go out and spend a whole lot of money because I know what it's like not to have it. Yeah. And the 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 sad thing is is that there aren't as many people going through those types of things. Yeah, yes, and because I know when when we got married, um and then when kids coming along then I wasn't working. So you're you're working on one budget Mm -hmm. and you're just watching the pennies. Yeah. uh, Yeah. and and seeing, you know, but Maybe get halfway through the month and thinking, is the, is the money going to do? That's right. And then a friend talked about, in, in church one day, talked about tithing. And so I started to tithe. And when I started to tithe, I didn't worry about the money. Because God's part went first. And I thought, right, it, never after that. So. It is amazing how faithful God is yeah. to us when, we, when yeah. we're obedient to him. Yeah. Wow. What a great story. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing. I do have to say this about you and Tom. You guys are such a great representation of a of a, a couple that have you guys have been together for how many years? Forty nine. Forty nine years. Yeah. And it is it, it's so refreshing because we see so much um, in in our world where you know relationships aren't what they're supposed to be, and you guys are a great picture of what a marriage should be. And uh, we we so appreciate you guys. Tom's very good at putting up with me all these years, <laughs> and I'm and I guarantee he would say the uh, the opposite. So uh, yeah, uh, Debbie and I look forward to being 
a lot like you guys when we're when we're your age. So thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. Do you struggle with motivation to exercise? Are you looking for something that will challenge you and inspire and motivate you? The Run for God Run Club is just what you need to get off the couch and on your way to a fitter, healthier you. Stop trying to get into better shape and do it with the help and inspiration of thousands of others who are going through the same challenges you face. Whether you are participating in the Couch to Marathon Challenge or any of our other challenges, or you're just looking for a daily pick-me-up to get active, join the Run for God Run Club today. You can join for as little as 27 cents a day. So what are you waiting for? Get started today at runforgod.com. We're back. And you know what else I like about you guys? I like that you use the word lovely oh. all the time. <laughs> I love that. Lovely word. too much. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. I love it. I just think it's a beautiful word to use. And uh, I just I love that. So, uh, yeah. Maybe it's limited vocabulary. <laughs> No, no, because we have our words. You know, one of the words that we use in America a lot is the word awesome. We describe yeah. everything as awesome. And. Sometimes it drives me crazy because I feel like we overuse the word. And when we talk about something that's awesome, that's not really awesome. Yeah. It's like, how are we diminishing that word? Because yes. I feel like God is awesome. That's yes. awesome. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so do you guys live in like a, a neighborhood, a city, a town? Uh, where do you guys? We live in a neighborhood, but we're just a few miles out of the town, right? Ten minutes would walk you in to yeah. the town. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So is it, it, the area there? Are you guys? Are, are there like small towns all over the place? How does uh, uh, with it, us our towns? We tend to have towns and then very little buildings in between. Okay. Whereas here in America, you have you would have shops, then you'd have houses, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we would tend just to focus on a town. Then there would be a few houses round the town. Mm. I'm not sure exactly what the the perimeter would be. And then you go a few miles and you're to the next town. Yeah, okay. Uh, and and our towns all have a centre, right? So the commercial in the middle, right? And then you would have the residential. That kind of around the town surrounds yes. the the commercial stuff. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. cool. That's uh, cool. I think a lot of our towns were were that way years ago, mm-hmm. and it's just changed over the years. Mm-hmm. As we, I think we've become more rural as you've been able to move around more yeah. with. Uh, but with also, the, you're not really allowed to to build too far out because then you have the you have the green space. Yeah. So you you need planning permission, and often you'll not get it. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a focus on keeping things green yeah. and, and pretty and nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, when I think about that area of the world, of course, I think about golf. But you guys aren't you guys aren't golfers at all? No, are you? no. Because uh, 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 I, I, of course, I'm a. I'm not much of a golf player, but I'm a golf fan. Oh, I, yeah. I have played a fair amount in my life when I was younger. I just don't have time these days, but. Um, the the Open Championship, the British Open, we call here. Yes, um, is just is it's great, and I see all those golf courses there yeah. on the ocean. That that's where we would go to train. Is that just right? By the, between Port Rush and Port Stewart. Okay, where the where the Open is. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yep, that's nice to have access to. Yeah, to run it. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful area. It is beautiful. Yeah. Well, Debbie, I bought Debbie years ago for her birthday. I bought her a one-foot square piece of land in Ireland. Do you know where? (laughs) Yeah, we've got a deed and stuff that tells us where it is. Oh, yes. And so one of these days, Debbie and I, we have to go to to, to To Ireland to see it. Yes. Yes. So so we're going to have to make it. And we both have some Irish ancestry in us. All right. Um, So... To be find out where exactly your ancestors came yeah, from. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't have the patience. Yes. To look through all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, yes. I think my brother and his wife they do a good bit of that. So mm-hmm. maybe I can find out your more ancestry. From, you know, where, yeah, exactly yeah. where we're from. Yes. So uh, yeah, that would be good. Yeah, like the president, he was over for his. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a yeah. week ago. 
I'm kind of a I'm kind of a mutt. I mean, we've got some Irish. We've got we're all over Europe. Mm. Our, yes. our ancestors, um, but it's it's pretty cool. We mm. have been to I don't know. Do you know what Ellis Island is? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yes, okay. but I haven't been there yet. Where where people it, back in the yes, day, came all, everybody yes. came through Ellis yeah. Island yes. there in, in New York, and um, I found. Our re- our ancestors that came through in the early 1900s yeah. um, came through Ellis Island, and their names are listed on the there's there's a place where yeah. all those names are listed. Yeah, and uh, so we and you had to have somebody to get you out of Ellis Island. Had yeah, to, uh, I, like a sponsor. Well, I no, I nope. think I think you had to. They did. They checked your health and things like uh, that. So yeah. not everybody. They didn't let everybody through. Yeah, but uh, just the healthy. But if you were healthy, I mm-hmm. think you you got through. Mm. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, now, as I understand it, Northern Ireland and Ireland, they're very different. I say different. They're very different and the same, right? Yes, yes. Like Northern Ireland is part of Ireland, but yet it's not. You have the Northern Ireland is part of the UK, right? And then Southern Ireland is actually ERA, it's, and that's we have the currency, we have the pound, and they have the euro. Yeah. So traveling there, you need euros, you need pounds sterling for us. Yeah. But apart from that, we just travel back and forward, no problem. Yeah. Um, but we would, most of our people would probably have originated from Scotland, a lot of people from England. Is that right? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Yes. I know my, I, my ancestors would be Scottish. Okay. Yeah. We now, would ha- actually have a, have a kilt. Do you, do you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, Deb, Debbie keeps getting on to me. She says she wants me to run the world record for the 5K f- in a kilt. Oh, brilliant. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> I, well, I Make sure it's not with me. I tried to look it up, but I can't find it anywhere. So apparently, if you just run one in a 5K. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And you've got a PR. <laughs> uh, um, well, and that's cool. And one of the other things that I, I didn't, didn't realize, I didn't realize, I, d- does. Does all of the UK still use the imperial system? Yes. I didn't realize that. I guess I assumed that everybody except the United States had gone to the metric system, mm. but that's not no, true. No, we do have we do have metric. We have the two together. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you do. We. Yep. So, we, but when you go but, from but with miles and kilometers, yeah, yeah when we you are go miles from, and and. Uh, Southern Ireland is kilometers. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. So it takes a bit of getting used to it. And I say, what does that mean we're doing now? <laughs> what speed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to you got to yeah. know a little bit about both, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And that's what I, one of the things I love about running is that we understand the metric system a little bit because of running. We know what four hundred, you know, a four hundred meter track is, yes. and we understand meters a little better than the yes. general population does. Yes, for sure. When I when we were walking, I my time is one and two. Is just different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine per mile is a kilometer. Well, I, I have my watch set on kilometers, believe yes. it or not. Um, mm. I, I did that for a particular race years ago. Um, I was running a 10K race, and I wanted to break it down by kilometers as I ran. And I've just left it on kilometers since then. So uh, yeah. when I get through and somebody says, well, did you get did you get eight miles for that run? I'm like, uh I got 13K. <laughs> um, Good. Yeah. Another thing I didn't realize about that area is uh, is population. So the population of Northern Ireland is like less than 2 million, yes. I think. Yeah. That's mm. – you mentioned the size. Yes. And, and I, I can see that, why it feels so big here. Mm. Then. I suppose America, you're spread out. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. Northern Ireland and in Southern Ireland, we're, we're close together in towns. Yeah. 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 And each town would only be about – Maybe 10 minutes away, 10, 15 yeah. minutes away. Yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. Um, so Northern Ireland has less people in it than the city of Atlanta. Yeah, that's amazing. And yes. the whole the whole island of Ireland has less people than the state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Not big. But, you know, that makes you realize when you, you go back and you, you know the, the old the potato famine that happened in the 1800s, there were over a million people that died mm-hmm. in yeah. that, at that time. Yeah. And you realize, because I think in the United States, when we think about a million people, it's a lot. It's a lot of people. Yeah. But it's not. You know, ten percent of our population. It's just, it's a, you know, it's it's not even a percent mm-hmm. of our population. Yeah, there, that was a huge chunk. That yeah. was a lot of people. Mm. That had to be. Huge. That, yeah. yeah, it gives you some perspective. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, Debbie and I are definitely looking forward to going to Ireland at some point. 
Um, but I did read where if you go, you, you kind of have to fly, fly into Dublin from the United States, it sounds yep. like. Yep. And then when you rent a car there, apparently if you want to drive into Northern Ireland, you have to pay extra for insurance to drive into Northern Ireland. Oh, gosh, do you? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. And yeah. You, there's a, they put trackers on the rental cars so that they know no, if you've you gone into rental. And, and they'll, 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 uh, give you a fine yes. if you go into Northern Ireland and you're not supposed to. So, uh, Gosh, you didn't know that. I would have thought yeah. you could have got right through without... Yeah, right, without because the there's no yeah. borders or anything like nope. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll have to... Uh, when we... When we travel over there, we're gonna. Of course, we're gonna have to check out Northern Ireland at this point. Yes, and um, we'll just have to pay the extra for the insurance to do it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, it'll be worth it. A lot of people that maybe just come into Dublin and they go around Southern Ireland and they don't come up towards Belfast. Yeah, um, because there's great scenery there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now yeah. they have a completely different accent, and they're more difficult to understand. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. that will. That, that's something to look forward to. I, you know, yeah. it's funny, I, and I guess I guess everybody's like this, but you, you, when you and I first talk, like the first five minutes of our talking, I have a real hard time. i got to really focus and concentrate. And then after about five minutes, and it, 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 it it's funny in. how your, yeah. your brain just. Yeah. 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 I do that with, uh, with podcasts. I listen to podcasts, and I'll put them on one and a half times speed so I can listen to more. Mm-hmm. And so when you do that, when you first start listening, you're like, oh, it's, it's too fast. I yeah, can't quite can't, catch. Can't pick but then up. after about five minutes or so, your yes. brain just starts to work faster. And it's. Yeah, it, that's amazing. It, yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. All right. It is a time for Dean's thoughts. And that's a time when I share something that I've written about the intersection between running and faith. You know, I began this story, I believe, when I was watching the first season of The Chosen. Um, which has been a couple of years ago. Um, and it's just kind of sat in a box, kind of just, I just, uh, as a story, as it started. I've got several that I, I start and then I just, I abandon them because maybe the thoughts aren't all there mm. or I just wanted to put an idea down and I just put the idea down and then I move on. So this is one that I just picked up and it's funny because I think you'll, you'll see when I talk about it. Or what the story is, you'll you'll understand why it's interesting that it comes up now. It's called "Get Used Get Used to Different." The latest statistics show that about one in every five people in the United States went for a jog or run in the last twelve months. Even fewer run regularly, and if you add in walkers, the numbers are still pretty low. That makes us unique. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We're different. I remember the ch- watching The Chosen, and I heard something I loved. Jesus and Peter are having a discussion about Matthew, who is unlike any of the others he had called to follow him. Peter, commenting about Matthew, says, he's different. And Jesus answered Peter with a direct proclamation, get used to different. What a great line that was. Sometimes we're a little reluctant to embrace being different. In Peter's case, the reason he brings it up is because he's clearly a little uncomfortable, if not with himself, even the idea of someone else being different. There are unwritten standards that most people believe they need to follow. As a coach of young people, I see it all the time. High school and college students are uncomfortable being different from their peers. I think as an older adult, we often think it is only young people who fear not going along with the crowd. But that's simply not true. I can't count how many times I've heard someone say, I'm too old to do that. Think about it. That really is the same thing. There are people of all ages who are afraid to stand out from a crowd as different. But that is not how God made us. He made each of us unique. My sons, Matthew and Caleb, came from the same DNA, yet they are completely different. Even identical twins are not really identical. Let's face it, we're all different. So why is it so hard to be different? We don't even need, we don't even need any practice to be good at it. <laughs> and since we're already there, why do we fret over certain differences while we don't even think about others? Just to be different. That includes running or walking. Most people would be too uncomfortable to run through the Atlanta airport, at least as a form of exercise. But what if you were late and you knew you had to catch a flight? 
would you pick up the pace, maybe run a little then? Most people would. So most people would run through the Atlanta airport, not uh, just not for exercise. Once again, it's okay to be different in one way, but not another. As Christians, we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to stand out. But society tells us that we should blend in. It is a constant battle between what God wants us to be and what the world tells us to be, isn't it? There is a reason why we are to shine our light out in the world. Not only are we to be different, we're supposed to attract attention, which is the opposite of blending in. I challenge you to be different. As a runner or a walker, you're already different. Embrace it. Be the light the world needs to see. And get used to different. <laughs> Do you like that a great one? Great story. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's funny how God works, um, yeah. you know, and how this, I feel like this is a perfect timing for this to, to be here because yeah. we're talking about all these differences. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and of course, when you're a walker, with the group that's called Run for God, yes, yes. you feel very different. Yes. And you even mentioned in your story how that felt a little uncomfortable yes. at first. Yeah. You didn't feel, almost like you didn't feel worthy of yes. wearing a shirt that yes. said run on yep. it. But, yes, um, exactly. But it's, I don't know, we're, we're called to be different. So do, do you find it hard in general to be different? Uh, probably yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, th- I think if you're an introvert, yeah, it is difficult. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that may be true. Mm. I I don't find it very difficult to be different. I think um, I'm a kind of a contrarian. I had my pastor recently tell me. He said, he said it took me a little while to learn about you. He said because you're very direct in in telling me what you don't agree with, and but then I realized that your your heart is is good you know that, that you have the best of it you have the best intentions and so we can get into these discussions and we can completely disagree with each other and we're okay with that yes and uh, so agree to disagree yeah. yeah and i think i think I, I like that i like people who disagree i like to talk mm-hmm. with people that, that i disagree yes. with and um but some people get their feelings hurt really bad yes. so you got to be careful with it but i think the reason why the bottom line reason why i feel comfortable being different is it goes back to my history back like you were talking yeah. about earlier when i was young when i was in high school um i was bullied a little bit i was a little guy i was a little skinny fellow and uh, that hasn't changed <laughs> and um i got picked on you know the big football player types you know and, and and i remember one time i'm riding my bike home from school and this big guy on the football team stops me on my bike and he just punched me in the face for fun. For no reason. Just for fun. No reason. He wanted to show off to the yeah. girls he was walking with, right? And he thought that was funny. And um, and I just remember that happening. And I remember just getting back on my bike and riding home. And I never told anybody about it. And um, I just didn't think anybody needed to know. And I was a little embarrassed, right? Yes. Well, fast forward a year or two later. And I'm the best athlete in the school now. And so these guys who were picking on me realize I'm a better athlete than they are. And now they all want to be my friends. And I'm like, no, I don't think so, buddy. I remember that time you stopped me on the road. You know, don't. I I won't go there. Now, if a lot of it was I was going to keep the same friends I had. And I kept those same friends. I remember there was a guy, his name was Lee Sammons. Lee Sammons was a guy that was kind of, he was a great guy, big heart, super, but he was, he was just kind of goofy. And so a lot of people, you know, the, the popular, the cool people, yeah. um, didn't really want to have a whole lot to do with, with Lee. And so my attitude was that he was my litmus test. If you treat Lee well, then I'll be your friend. Yes. You don't treat Lee well. I will not be your friend, period. And I think that 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 being in that unique position of people wanting to be your friend and you not necessarily want to reciprocate makes it easy for me today. Yes, to be different. (laughs) To be different and to be a contrarian, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it takes something sometimes to to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I. Again, in a sense, I was being different um, because I, I cared more about the feelings of my friends than I cared about their feelings. Yes. And uh, yeah. 
and about being in with the in crowd. I've never been one to to want to be in with the in crowd. I yeah. never cared about that at all. And it's so unusual. And again, I think that all of that probably was part of it. But uh, that makes it. And I, I guess you know that helps me today in my Christian walk because I don't mind being bold and somebody. Yeah. I did a video one time for, you know, coaching at the college. I coach at a public college um, where, you know, they don't they they don't allow you um, to be real open about your faith. You know, it's the, the separation of church and state. They call yes. it here in, yeah. in America. And um, I, I did this video and I basically said, you know, my faith is really important to me. And that's that's how I make my decisions and, and that kind of thing. And it was just kind of a get to know you kind of video that that's out on the website for people. And, and um, somebody said, well, what happens if somebody complains about that? And they tell you to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, they were looking for a coach when they found me. Yes. So if, if they want to if find want another the coach, one, that's, yeah. that's fine. Uh, yeah, um, but, but I'm not backing down yes. from that because that's who I am. And, um, you know, if you don't like it, then okay. Let's yeah. talk about why we don't like it. Let's 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 have a conversation yeah, yeah. about why I think you know being a Christian is important, mm-hmm. and that opens some doors occasionally. Yeah. So uh, so that's, that's a conversation. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so I guess that happens everywhere. I guess it's probably the same in Northern Ireland, right? A lot of people are consumed with wanting to be part of the popular culture. Oh yes, yes. I think you find that in in all cultures. Yeah. In all countries. Yeah. 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 People just don't like to be different. And no, I, no, they don't. And and I think there's more pressure on young people now not to be different. Yeah, you know, even right. drawn into something. A friend recently said her her daughter had got her her eyebrows done, taken taken off, and then penciled in. Uh, uh-huh. And there was it was, I think it was more permanent than pencil. And she looked at her and she said, "Granny, what do you think?" She said, "Do you want to understand, sir?" She said, "Well, I don't like it." And her, her granddaughter said, well, I'm not too keen on it either. And she said, well, why did you get it done? Well, my friends were all getting it done. Uh, and, and they were all saying it was cool and you look so much better. She yeah. said, but, you know, I don't. Yeah. You know, but she just felt that she had to go with them in order not to stand out. So right. there right. is quite a pressure on yeah, young people. There is. And mm. I think we underestimate that. I think. I think sometimes we look at it and we go, well, it's just, it's just plain. It's just simple. You just don't do but it, it takes a lot of it's why it's why parenting is so important oh yes it, it's yes. so important to to really um reinforce from a very young age you know it's okay to be different yes it's okay to not do these things yes you know and um but i i, I fear that um we had a generation of parents who were you know, using the television as their babysitter, and um, exactly, and, and we're paying for that. To yeah, some and yeah. and too much media now for the young people, and it's yeah. too handy, and they're on the phone all the time. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I know. With us, our younger ones wouldn't have been on TV or anything else, and um, so that that has helped. But uh, this generation, as you're saying, is coming along now, and because both parents are working. Yeah. Then they need something maybe when they come home. Yeah. You know, making supper or whatever, dinner. Yeah. Uh-uh. I have so much respect for parents who do not give their kids a cell phone until they're maybe in high school. Yes. Because that's hard to do. Mm-hmm. It's hard for the parent to do because it the is. parent's getting a lot of pressure because yep. the kid is like, I'm the only one in my oh, school, yes, yes. you know, who doesn't have mm-hmm. a phone. Done but but it, it, I look at. Mitchell's kids, Lane and Landon. And Lane and Landon didn't grow up with a cell phone before they got to high school. And do you know what Lane and Landon are really good at? Having a conversation. Yes. Yes. You know why? Because they were forced used. to do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh well, as kids now, you know, they'll even go out maybe for a coffee or whatever with us. Um we would the, the kids would go out for coffee. Um and they would be texting away. You know, yeah. and then maybe to a friend across the table. Yep, yep. And so you're talking to. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's so crazy. Yes, but uh, and and we're not demonizing cell phones. No, no, no. Just just no. to be clear, because yeah. mine is so important to me for a lot of reasons. A lot of the work that I do. Yes, um, it's really important. We need them. We do yeah. need them, yes. but uh, yeah, we just got to be careful. Um, 
So w- when mm-hmm. you were in school, were you were you more on my side or were you more part of the cool group when you were in school? No, I wouldn't have been part of the cool group. <laughs> Maybe one of the people who have got people picking two teams. I've probably been one of the ones of the last ones to be picked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, well, how, yeah, I know here in the United States, our schools are broken up. It's first grade through fifth grade is elementary school, and then sixth through eighth is middle school, and then ninth through twelfth is high school in most areas of the country. Is it similar in Northern Ireland? We would have uh, kids going ages four to 11. Yeah. At primary, then secondary education, then is up to 18, 16. Okay. They can actually leave at 16, uh, with the O level, as we would call it. Okay. And then they stay a couple of years to 18 to do A level. Okay. And then at that point, then they can go on to university if they wish, or to further education, technical college or something like that, where they learn uh, the more practical skills like woodwork or, you know, uh, your trades. So are there a lot of trade schools there? Well, there'd be more the technical colleges yeah. would, would be do that. Okay. Um, but then you'd have to go and specialize more, yeah. you know, from that. But they they would do the, the trades. That's that's really good because I feel like that's an that's a that's been a blind spot in the United States is we've told every child that they need to go to a a, a university. And we're, we're, we're having a hard time finding plumbers and electricians yes. and, and people that, uh, that need to, need to do those things. Mm-hmm. So. But those few years ago, you know, it would only have been the, probably the more wealthy who would have gone to university. Yeah. And when, when I was growing up. And then it's got to a point then where they're encouraging young people. Yeah. And so there are more young people going to university. Yeah. So they'll come out from that end. So as you say, they're maybe less. Going to the technical college because yeah. it's almost maybe seen as well, you're, you're not as intelligent. Yeah. You know. Well, I think that'll swing back the other way soon. Yeah, let's hope so. You know that moment when you're running and you settle into that perfect pace, and then the next song comes on. Don't let that happen again. With the new J Radio, you can trust us to make sure that the next song in your playlist will help you keep up that pace. Check out the Radio Active Station on J Radio for all different genres of workout music handpicked for you while you run. Start listening now at JRadio.com. Every week, I share a reason why running or walking is so awesome, and this is my reason this week. How, what else could I have? How else can you meet friends from halfway around the world at a little 5K event, <laughs> right? Uh, we literally had people from all over the place at, at the 5K this past weekend. Yes. And, of course, you guys came from the furthest away. Um, we had a lot of folks that drove for many hours to get here and flew in and yeah. Um, so it was such, it's a, such an extraordinary thing for such an ordinary event, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. So, yeah. and all because we have two things in common. We're runners or walkers and we have Jesus. Yes. And it's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you have any final thoughts about, um, run for God or, or anything that you want to say that you haven't said so far? Well, I think on Saturday night, I shared about God giving me the word when yeah. uh, after we decided to come and I think is it was it right to come and the word as I said was banquet <clears throat> and I just feel when when I spoke it was yes banquet but not in the sense of food necessarily right. it was the abundance of everything that yeah. God was going to give yeah and we have had that yeah. in in every way that I could think of yeah um hospitality with Mitchell and Holly and the boys has just been amazing. Yeah. Uh, the friendship of people, um, just every way that God is given. Um, because when I think of banquet, I think of lavish extravagance. Yeah. And that's just what God has given. Wow. He's never short on, on, on his generosity. Never. Wow. And, and to me, I have, I have found that. Yeah. You know, come this weekend, you That's know, awesome. you're, you're just thinking of the main things or whatever, um, and you're traveling all of the rest, but just all the small details. 
yeah. you know, health and just just everything. That's awesome. Uh, so I just I just felt that God wanted to share that. And as I said about the the verse, yeah, you know, um, His banner over us is love. He brought yeah. us to the bank reading table, and His banner over us is love. Yeah, and just the pictures we go out as runners or walkers, that we carry that banner with us. Um, and I shared about the the children of Israel, and I mm-hmm. read that they camped around the tent of meeting, yep. and each one of the tribes had their banner. That's right. And uh, God's banner over us yeah. is love, and I just picture that as we're walking or running, that the banner's flying over us. That's right. The and banner it's, it's of love. God's love. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Well, you, we were in we were in Kahuta on uh, Friday night. What did you think about our little town in Kahuta? Oh, very quaint, very yeah. quaint. Yes, yeah. I had seen some pictures of it before we came, and yeah. I think we probably didn't see all the all the beautiful buildings. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. We we like our little town, and yeah. uh, of course, our, our mayor is pretty passionate, isn't he? Yes, yes. You know, he was in uh, he was in my the first Run for God class I ever taught. He was in, and yeah. uh, um, he and his 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 precious wife. Uh, we're in that class, and I remember his wife finishing the 5K that time. It was what we used to, what what is now the Run for God 5K used to be what we called Run at the Mill. And I remember her coming in to finish, and I was so excited for her because her goal was just to be able to run the whole way and not walk. And she hadn't been able to go that far before, but that day she was doing it, and she was getting near the finish line. I was so excited for her, and as she's coming toward me, I'm putting my hand up for a high five, and she's like, she puts her head down, and she just keeps going like, I'm, she's ignoring my high five, yes. right? And I'm like, is she okay? When she got done, she was like, I just, I was so focused, I wanted to get done, yes. and she was afraid that if she gave me a high five, she might have tripped and fallen or something yes. and not made it. And so she just wanted to make sure she stayed on task. And uh, it was, it was so television. Precious. That's yeah. right. It yeah. was so, so precious. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was fun. It was funny. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, we appreciate you guys being here. I get so tickled listening to all of the the talk about you and Tom, people talking about you guys, because uh, people in this group just love you guys. You're kind of celebrities in the <laughs> Run for God world. Um, and so uh, we, we just appreciate it. But let me leave everybody with a trivia question for this week. And um, since we've talked so much about walking, this is an interesting trivia question. What is the longest walkable road in the world? Of course, if it's walkable, it's probably runnable, too. So what is the longest walkable road in the world? When you find that, you are going to be amazed. So go out there and find the answer to that. And if you're the first one to answer that and send it to dean at runforgod.com, then you will win $20 off in the Run for God store. Cash is awesome, so everybody likes it. So, <laughs> so get out there, figure out that answer to that question, and send that to Dean at RunForGod.com. And I'll send you away with this motivational thought of the week. It comes from Louise L. Hay. It says, remember, you have been criticizing yourselves for years, and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. That's a great quote. Isn't that a good quote? You know, I wish I knew the story behind that quote because there's probably a good story behind it. But, um, you know, there's so many people who are just so critical of themselves all the time. And God's not critical of you. Yeah. God God loves you and approves of you. And uh, if you'll do the same thing, you may find that you have a whole different outlook on life. Yeah, because I think people think that God works the same way as we do. That's right. And And he's he's not good at That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Val, for for hanging out with us. Uh, Debbie and I love you guys, and the Run for God crew loves you guys, and we're so glad you could be here. And um, we're so glad that God put all that on your heart. And thank you for sharing your story. It's just a a lovely story to hear. It's been an honor and a privilege to be here and to get the T-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, God is using you. Until next week, may God bless every step of every run. Go out there and shine your light. Good job, Dean. 
For more information about the Run for God ministry, go to runforgod.com. If you have questions about your salvation, click on the Peace with God tab. There's nothing more important. Thanks for joining us today.